A lot of people continue to say that this inflation period is transitory, especially uh, the Fed. What happens if this lasts for longer than uh, previously thought? Because in the last time when we had this sort of uh, recovery in 2009 after the financial crisis and commodities were surging, inflation lasted for at least two years with raw materials prices rising. Well, I think the situation this time around is actually quite different, largely because of the fact that uh, during the um, aftermath of the global financial crisis, you had China stimulating the economy uh, dramatically, and China basically accounted for, I would say, most, if not for all, of the uh, rise in commodity prices uh, um, during that period. This time around, we have a fully synchronized uh, global recovery from the uh, COVID-19 recession last year, but this recovery is not expected to last because we do think that the uh, inflation concerns are likely to actually fade away from 2023 onwards. So you know, on a short-term basis, yes, you're going to get a very strong rise in prices coming in from a low base of last year. But um, we don't think that this is likely to actually uh, transition into a longer-term sustainable increase in prices. And yet, are you starting to position for higher inflation? Are you buying into those reflation trades? Yes, I think over the next um, 12 months, we do expect core PCE to actually rise to about 2.5%. So in that sense, we do think that uh, on a shorter-term basis, the reflation trade is likely to be quite important. And uh, we are actually looking at uh, positioning into um, some instruments, like, for example, your senior loans, uh, because these are likely to actually trade better when rates are actually starting to rise. What about tech, Calvin? Because we see this fading correlation between what yields are doing and the sell-off in tech, which you know kind of tells us that maybe this is more to do with fundamental valuations, right? Where are the opportunities across the tech spectrum for you now? Yeah, at this point in time, I think the um, tech sector uncertainty is likely to actually continue for a while, uh, largely because you also have the regulatory concerns coming in from the U.S. side. But nonetheless, we do think that where the tech sector is concerned. Uh, the Chinese internet stocks in particular look pretty attractive after the sell-off this year. And on a valuation basis, on a growth basis, we think that they're actually far more attractive than the U.S. Um, tech sector at the moment. So, which gets me to, to names like Alibaba. When you talk about the attractiveness of the Chinese tech sector, does that mean that you assume that the regulatory overhang is largely over, or at least that aspect of risk has bottomed out? Yeah, we, we, we don't think it's over at the moment, but we do think that most of the uncertainty has actually been dealt with. And I think the uncertainty basically relates to the uh, kind of punishment that, uh, if I can call it punishment, right, uh, the kind of punishment that uh, the uh, big um, Chinese internet stocks are likely to go through over the next couple of months. And I do think that uh, the standards actually have been pretty much set. Like, for example, a fine of 4 to 5 percent of your total revenue, a one-off, and a pretty strong uh, stern warning with regards to the exclusivity platform over the next, um, uh, in, the, in the foreseeable future. So we do think that most of that is actually pretty much in the price. But it's just that on a short-term basis, this overhang uh, is likely to weigh on the prices. But we do think that this is actually a very good opportunity to actually buy into the weakness of some of these names.